Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. The Bolin Python just shed out and looks spectacular. I just have to show you it off. This thing is getting close to coming back over here to the Reptarium and I know people are going to love it because it is one of the most ridiculous snakes in the world and I hope that your day is going amazing. Do me a favor, let's push our problems aside and have a great time together. I'm not gonna lie to you, this vlog is gonna get a little freaky and by freaky, I mean we hatch a snake that is a complete weirdo. So uh, let's just go ahead uh, and jump right into showing you what I mean by that. That lorry pin to lorry with that super lorry pin hatched out. I want to show you this clutch. I'm not going to lie, a huge, huge, huge disappointment is going to about to be shown here, but I'm going to show you the good stuff first. These are actually all lorry pinstripes, and it's really cool. You can see the difference between a normal pinstripe here and a lorry pinstripe right here. That faded look to it, that lorry ball python just kind of makes that axanthic y look to it, kind of changes up the pattern. And we did really good with this one, two, three, four lorry pinstripes. And to give you an idea, this is a lorry ball python right here. So this gives you an idea, and then you can put that up against the only normal from the clutch, and you can really see the difference in the color and the pattern. It almost has that little bit of connecting saddles and stuff like that, some kind of flaming up the side. So that's really cool. But of course, the creme de la creme of this clutch was the only super lorry, which is super lorry pin. But I tell you what, guys, sometimes this happens with genetics. I am so bummed out about this. Look at the deformity on the nose right there, guys. That's right, it was born deformed. And it happens with all kinds of different mutations. You can have it with albinos, you can have it with pies, you can have it with cinnamon. It's not that this deformity is linked to the Lori gene, it's just that sometimes, genetically, you just end up having a deformity, and I am so bummed. Now, what will happen to this ball python? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna euthanize it. I'm gonna set it up, I'm gonna let it shed, I'm gonna do the best. It may eat and do completely fine. If it does, then I'll probably just rehome it as a pet to somebody, or maybe even keep it myself as a pet. I mean, it's kind of cute. It's got that little bulbous nose thing, but I am so bummed because this was the animal that was the best animal as far as genetically in the clutch, but this is part of it, guys. I've told you, I am going to take you on the journey, the good, the bad, the ugly. This happens to everyone. Not everyone shares it, but I'm going to share it because if you ever breed snakes, you're going to have this happen, and it is deflating. I'm not going to lie. I was so excited about this ball python, but hey, listen, hopefully it still thrives and does good, and it'll make a good pet down the road. Well, what do you know? I have a really busy heck day today uh, and so far I'm the only one here the crew shows up in a couple hours but Lucy of course decided to, oh my gosh guys that is the biggest poop soup yet oh now I fed her a bunch of rabbits over the last few weeks and all those rabbits came out oh uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be horrible I'm not even gonna lie to you this is gonna be I should wear a mask for this or something but uh yeah, let's just let's just jump there and do it That was quite the aroma, I'm not gonna lie. Lucy, you did good, girl. Uh, I think she's gonna be ready to eat some more rabbits here pretty soon, because she deposited, I'd say, at least 20 pounds of poop in that water. I wanna show you guys like the three stages of the ball python production, right? We've got the egg cutting, we've got the fresh hatch, and then we've got the shed. All of those are three different completely things, because once they shed, they look completely different. I'm gonna start with this banana G-stripe. Just take a look at this monkey right here. I mean, that is incredible with that perfect stripe down his back, the purple outlining. I mean, that thing is a ripper once it's shed out. I love it. Definitely uh, one of the cooler mutations 
business when it comes to bananas for sure. This was one of those fire pin yellow bellies. And I just think that those three combinations put together just make for a really, really gorgeous snake. And again, fresh head looks amazing. This one's actually an Enchi Lemon Blast yellow belly. So there's a lot going on. There's pastel, there's Enchi, there's pinstripe, and there's yellow belly in it. So a four gene animal. Those four genes together really make this thing look electric. Bluebirds are continuing to hatch. Maybe we'll get a little uh, Clubert hatch jingle going. I'm not 100% sure. This one is actually just a bunch of greenish rat snakes. Really beautiful snakes. There's a bunch of babies that are still in the egg, but we have some cool ones out here. And these guys, again, turn kind of green with like lateral stripes on them when they get older. But as babies, they have the kind of cool gray and saddles and stuff like that. Really cool snakes. These are a animal that are typically found in Florida. They can get literally like, you know, six, even sometimes seven foot long. So a really cool snake. I love these guys. I always love them. We actually even produce albino greenish rats, which I think is really cool as well. This clutch is one of the first clutches of Kluberts. I was like, oh my God, I cannot wait. And it's actually just pipped out. So these guys are probably be hatching out tomorrow. These are the lavender snow cow kings, that solid purple snake. Now I know I hatch out ball pythons have like purplish hues, but these guys are literally purple. I mean, they are unbelievable. Not on the egg yet. So probably by tomorrow, we'll be able to show you guys. Oh my gosh, am I excited. So make sure you tune into tomorrow's vlog because this is gonna be cool with those purple babies. And just a few eggs in this clutch. It's actually a pastel ghost, which is a hypo ball python bred to a fire yellow belly. So really we could just get like firefly yellow bellies that are het for ghost and stuff like that. Nothing too crazy, but you might notice that a lot of the breeding that I'm doing this year is that entry level type of pet trait type thing, right? I'm not going for things that are gonna be super expensive. What I'm going for is things that you guys can afford that are super cool looking, but not going to cost you a thousand dollars or more. You know, don't get me wrong. We're going to have some of those out there, but the majority of my breedings, I've kind of wanted to have the ones that you guys can afford that you can add and stuff like that, that just will make beautiful pets. So let's go ahead and see what's in this clutch. Here's the first egg. And here we go. What do we have here right off the rip? Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, doggy. We hit the firefly yellow belly head ghost right off the bat, guys. So this is, again, this is the all gene animal. It's also heifer ghost. So that is a gorgeous snake. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Again, something that's not gonna be extremely crazy. You know, that's maybe a, a $250 snake, maybe a $200 snake. That's really where I wanna live, right? I wanna live in this, that beautiful, gorgeous snake that pretty much most people can afford. That's what I really wanna provide, right? Because I don't do investment animals anymore. I don't breed snakes from an investment standpoint. I breed them because I want you guys to be able to have really cool animals. Egg number two. All right, that was a great way to start the clutch. And wait, we got something cool here again. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Another firefly yellow belly, whoo, doggy. That's right, two firefly yellow belly head goes. Uh, odds can't get much better than that to hit all the genes in one. Oh my God, last day. Could, would it be crazy if I hit all three of these? Let's just go ahead and see what we got. All right, here we go. Wow, what a wait, what an awesome day. And uh, we didn't hit the firefly yellow belly, but we did hit the firefly head ghost. So we had two firefly yellow belly head ghosts and one firefly head ghost. That is pretty awesome odds for three eggs. I cannot complain. And again, beautiful animals. You guys are going to love them when they crawl out. And as always, I'll update you as they have. And then sometimes even something really simple here, like a pastel enchi yellow belly can just make for a gorgeous snake. A lot of times I always say it doesn't take five, six, seven genes. Sometimes the right two or three genes together just make for an incredible animal. Remember that crazy clown clutch with the world's first? Well, this was actually the enchi clown out of shed. And whoo, doggy, I tell you that head pattern is ridiculous. And I absolutely love the way this Mojave clown turned out. I mean, that is so cool. Those two genes together are unbelievable. I mean, that thing is so just kind of soft. It's chocolate. I mean, it really looks like a chocolatey thing that you could eat or something like that. That thing is gorgeous. And then here's that world's first. This is that banana enchi Mojave clown ball python. Unbelievable. I mean, look at that right there. That is unreal. So I'll continue to do this. Just update you guys as things shed, show off some things like that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to keep doing it.
in the dungeon, which can only mean one thing. Well, it could mean a couple things, but it does mean this. <laughs> and today we have a fireball python. Just gonna take this this away right here. And ooh, mama looks like she is not happy for sure. So I'm gonna be really careful. And she was actually bred to a really cool male. This red stripe vanilla scream yellow belly. Oh my god, what a banger. So these could be some pretty cool babies. We're just gonna try to get mama off without her getting too upset with me. Oh, whoop, whoop. Come on, mom. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, that's okay, mama. It's all right. Oh my gosh, she's definitely giving me a run for my money. I'm not gonna lie to you. She's in a spot where I'm not sure how I'm gonna get her. Whoo. Uh. Okay, here we go. We got her now. As Soon as we can start getting her moving, she's good. I'll just kind of set her aside, just try to get these eggs out of here without her getting too upset with me. And it's a beautiful clutch of eggs. Wow, I tell you, what a clutch of eggs. And interestingly enough, the fire gene was the first kind of white snake producing gene that was out there, right? So the super fires are actually the black-eyed Lucy's, and a guy over in England actually produced the very first black-eyed Lucistic. It made a huge, huge buzz in the reptile industry, and now all these years later, uh, they're relatively common, so it's pretty cool. There's two, four, six, eight beautiful eggs, and that is the only clutch of ball pythons for the day. More unboxing, guys. We have so much stuff to show you today. This would, I would think this would be a shirt. This actually comes from uh, Illinois. Oh, I shirt. know what this is. <laughs> he actually sent me a message and he said it was kind of a racy shirt. He's like, I racy. hope you don't mind. I don't know what it says. It can't so. be any racier than your cock shirt. Stop, what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> Wanna see my see balls? My balls. <laughs> It's not, it's not, it's it's, not that it's bad. It's fine. He just can't wear it at the reptarium with children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. But it, it's, it's not as bad. As, when, when he sent me the thing, I was like, oh my gosh, what is this going to be? So that was actually cool. I like it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. That's awesome. That's super cool. Like I said, much, much tamer than I expected. I thought, I was thinking like, oh, what is he going to send us? Handle with care. This actually comes means. from uh, Cannon Falls, Minnesota. It says, uh, oh, happy day. Long Thing says, I watched your heartfelt video the other day on anxiety. Thank you so much. I have depression myself and I take medication to help. I've been a practicing RM for 20 years and before the holistic approach as well. I've enclosed a bracelet you can wear and apply essential oils to with rocks and stones. I love that, by the way. I am so into it. You guys know that, uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't show you. A friend of ours came from Ohio and gave me this. This is so incredible. This has a drop of water from the top of Mount Everest and this is actually a drop of water from the Dead Sea and it's kind of the balance in life that I'm trying to see. So I love this. Yeah, I will this absolutely awesome. wear this. Thank you so much. This is from Stephanie Anderson. So Stephanie, thank you so much. I will absolutely do that. I'm a huge essential oils guy and lavender is great. So uh, what do you do? You actually put it right on this? Is that That's how it is? What she and said. Absorbs? It probably says on the Love it. You, you will see me wearing this. I promise you. Thank you so much. It certainly was a disappointment to see that super lorry come out deformed. I mean, well, I'll keep you guys posted if it kind of makes it. We'll do the best we can do to give it its best of a home, but that was a wild, wild thing. Uh, I hope that you guys didn't mind me showing you that. If you did enjoy this, why don't you do this playlist right here? It's a bunch of really good baby snakes. That'll kind of cheer you up today if you don't mind. Could you also do me a really huge favor? Can you subscribe to my podcast channel? It's right up there. It's called Checking In. We do podcasts at least once a week on Wednesday. Oftentimes on Fridays as well. Over here, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Remember, have an absolutely wonderful day and be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you tomorrow.